بلان بروتين نيتروجينس برودكتس اوف بلاد دي المحاضره بتاعتنا في البلاد ده الجزء اللي هنذاكره في البلاد اوكي سو وات ار ذا نون بروتين نيتروجينس برودكتس ان بي ان includes the nitrogen from all nitrogenous substances other than proteins. So we have in our plasma, in our blood, substances which contain nitrogen, but they are not proteins. We all know that uh, only proteins are the main, uh, not only, but the main uh, substances present in our body which contains nitrogen are protein. Okay, uh, so we know that uh, ammonia or nitrogen originates from protein, but sometimes other products, other end products of metabolism uh, contains nitrogen and they are present circulating in the blood uh, and they affect our health and they indicate certain diseases if they are abnormally elevated or abnormally low. So we call them non-protein or NPN of blood. Substances, uh, uh, فيها نيتروجين بس هي مش بروتين احنا ما عارفين ان المين سبستنس اللي فيها نيتروجين في جسمنا هي البروتين اللي هي فيها الامونيا او الان اتش 2 او كده لكن في نون بروتين نيتروجينس برودكتس موجوده في البلازما الليفل بتاعها بيهمنا في البلاد لازم تبقى وذين النورمال علشان لو في اي اليفيشن او ديكريز في الليفل بتاعها في البلاد they indicate certain types of disease Okay, so let's know what are the non-protein um, nitrogenous products of blood or what are the NPN. They include urea, uric acid, creatinine, and ammonia, and amino acids as well. So all of them are end products of metabolism, and they contain nitrogen. So we call them NPN of blood. So uh, normally, uh, the components of the non-protein nitrogenous fraction we have urea, 45% uh, of the total NPN is urea, which originates from uh, the breakdown of proteins in the body. Amino acid constitutes 20%, the amino acid pool. Uric acid, 20%, creatinine, 5%, creatine, 1% to 2%. Of course, uh, creatine is converted to creatinine after muscle contraction, like we are going to see, to see now and ammonia 0.2%. So these are the percentages of the non-protein nitrogenous products of blood. So 45% uh, 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 of the NPN uh, is in the form of urea. 20% of the NPN of blood is in the form of amino acid and so on. Now, now the first NPN is urea. Urea is the major excretory product of protein metabolism. It's formed in the liver from amino groups and free ammonia generated during protein catabolism. Plasma concentration is 40 to 50% of the total NPN, like we said before. If a urea, the major end product of protein metabolism. After we eat proteins and we digest proteins, uh, proteins are totally converted to amino acids. These amino acids are uptaken by the cells and they are deaminated, which means that we remove ammonia and this ammonia is converted to urea in the liver because ammonia is toxic and the liver converts the ammonia to urea to be excreted uh, by uh, the kidneys. Urea is the result of the metabolism of protein. We normally eat protein, we do the digestion, the hud, and then all the proteins are completely into amino acids. The amino acids are going to be الامينو اسيد دي بتدخل البلاد بتدخل جوه كل الخلايا كل الخلايا بتحول بقى بتعمل دي امينيشن للامينو اسيد او بتاخد منه الامينو جروب والامينو جروب او الامونيا دي توكسيك فالليفر بيتعامل معاها انه بيحولها ليوريا يبقى اليوريا جايه منين؟ جايه من الامونيا بتاعت الامينو اسيد يبقى الاند برودكت اوف بروتين ميتابوليزم از يوريا لان الامونيا توكسيك فلازم الليفر ياخدها يحول لها الى يوريا يعمل لها ديتوكسيفيكيشن بروسس. So this is uh, the pathway of ammonia of urea synthesis. You are going to take this um, in details in 202 inshallah. So amino acids liberate amino group or liberate ammonia. This ammonia is uptaken by the liver to be converted to urea which is excreted by the kidney. So the normal level of urea in the serum or in blood from 20 to 40 milligram per deciliter, you have to know these values by heart and you have to know the, the unit. It's very important. From 20 to 40 milligram per deciliter, deciliter means 100 ml of blood, contains 20 to 40 milligram urea. In urine, the kidneys excrete 20 to 40 gram per day of urea. 
the blood urea nitrogen ranges from 6 to 20 milligram per deciliter. What's the blood urea nitrogen or the bun? It's the urea, but, but actually uh, it's uh, 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 half, uh, uh, only it measures the nitrogen present in the urea. So its molecular weight is half the molecular weight of urea. So the value is nearly half the values of urea level. So BUN, what's a BUN? Okay. The BUN or the blood urea nitrogen is, uh, it measures only uh, the nitrogens present in urea. It measures only the nitrogen present. So if we measure the urea molecule as a whole, it's going to be from 20 to 40 milligram per deciliter. If we only measure the, the nitrogen of urea, it's going to range from six to 20 milligram per deciliter, okay? Uh, the European uh, 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 units, uh, they use the urea. Uh, the American, uh, they use uh, the BUN. When they express the urea level. يبقى uh, البان واليوريا هما الاثنين حاجه واحده بس دول بيستخدموا في اليوروبيان ستايل ودول بيستخدموا في الامريكان يعني الامريكانز دايما يقولوا بي يو ان ما يقولوش يوريا. ايه الفرق بين الاثنين؟ ولا حاجه، الفرق ان انا هنا في البي يو ان بقيس بس البلاد يوريا نيتروجين بقيس النيتروجين بس اللي في اليوريا فكميتها بتبقى نص كميه اليوريا مولكول على بعضها. That's it يعني. طب what are the factors affecting urea level causes of elevated serum urea level or what we call azotemia elevated serum urea is called azotemia or uremia اللي خليها تعلى <coughs> pre renal causes يعني حاجات مالهاش علاقه بالكلى هي مين ليها تعلى لو في renal cause the main cause of elevated serum urea is renal failure acute or chronic renal failure which is called uremia glomerular nephritis or tubular necrosis all these are causes of elevated urea in the blood because the kidney is responsible for excreting excess urea. So if there is renal failure, urea will not be normally excreted and it will be elevated in the blood. Now, the pre-renal cause include acute shock, loss of blood volume, hemorrhage, heart attack, high protein diet can elevate your ure urea level, GIT hemorrhage because hemorrhage is blood, and uh, this means that there will be uh, uh, blood contains proteins, and this means that there will be excessive ammonia and excess urea and so on. Fever, because it's a dehydration status, and dehydration like fever or acute shock, loss of blood volume, dehydration affects mainly the renal perfusion, and so the urea will not be excreted normally in the urine, so it, its level will elevate in the blood. يعني الناس اللي عندها acute shock واحد فقد كمية دم كبيرة عمل حادثة وفقد كمية دم كبيرة يعني هايبوفوليميا كمية الدم اللي بتوصل للكلى قليلة فالكلى هتعمل فلتريشن ازاي لليوريا مش هتعمل لها فلتريشن فهتعلى بس ده مش سببه كدني سببه حاجة ما قبل الكدني في هايبوفوليميا بسبب هامرج و loss of fluids أو حد عنده جي أي تي هامرج واحد بينزف آه اللي بينزف ده يعني بلاد والبلاد فيه بروتينز والبروتينز بتتكسر وتطلع أمونيا والامونيا بتتحول ليوريا في الليفر فده يعلي اليوريا ليفل اوكي هاي بروتين دايت ممكن يعلي اليوريا بس مش في الناس الهيلثي يعني الناس النورمال مش هيعلي لها اليوريا الناس اللي عندها بروبلم بقى هي اللي ممكن الهاي بروتين دايت يعلي لها اليوريا <تصفيق> what about the post renal cause renal stones tumors infection something which impairs uh, the urinary flow will lead to urea uh, hyper uh, or, or azotemia. The second NPN is creatinine. What is creatinine? Creatinine is a natural waste product in the body that is created by muscle metabolism. Muscle during contraction, <coughs> when the muscle contracts, it converts creatine to, uh, this is the, Let's see, this is the, the, the pathway, creatine and, crea and creatinine, metabolism. Uh, okay. Normally, creatinine originates from creatine. What is creatine? Creatine is synthesized in the kidneys from arginine and glycine. Then their synthesis is completed in the liver. Creatine is transported then through the blood to the muscle where it combines with phosphate to form creatine phosphate or phosphocreatine. 
Phosphocreatine stores energy in the muscle through creatine kinase enzyme. Creatine is converted to phosphocreatine. You remember creatine kinase from the isozymes? It has an isozyme in the muscle to convert creatine to creatine phosphate, which stores energy in the muscle. So when the muscle contracts, okay, uh, phosphate is liberated to form ATP, and creati creatine is converted to creatinine, which is excreted in the urine. So after muscle contraction, creatine is converted to creatinine. So creatinine is a product of muscle mass. And it's, uh, of course, it's more uh, in male than female because uh, male have bulky muscles, so they produce more creatinine, okay? It's totally excreted by the kidney, so any, any renal affection will elevate the creatinine level because it's totally excreted by the kidney. It will be transported to the kidneys to be excreted in urine. So it's synthesized in the kidney and the liver, to be transported to the muscle. The muscle stores uh, phosphate in the form of creatine phosphate. So when the muscle, which is the energy store of the muscle, when the muscle contracts, creatine is converted to creatinine. Creatinine is transported through the blood to the kidney to be excreted by the kidney. So any defect, any renal disease can elevate the creatinine level and in the blood, and it's a very sensitive marker for renal function. So creatinine is a natural waste product in the body created by muscle metabolism and to small extent by eating meat. It's found in blood and excreted in urine. Normal level in males from 0.6 to 1.2 milligram per deciliter. In females, less because they have less bulky muscle from 0.5 to 1.1 milligram per deciliter. It's very sensitive. So if a patient has a 1.4 creatinine in serum, it means that he has a renal defect. يعني هو sensitive marker قوي للكidney function. فلو ال 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 creatinine حتى elevated بنسبة بسيطة جدا يعني مثلا normal في الميل لحد 1.2. لو لقيته 1.4 تقلق. لازم تدور ايه المشكلة اللي في الكidney. ايه اللي معليه. اوكي؟ بنقيس حاجة اسمها creatinine clearance عشان نطمن على renal flow على ال ال glomerular filtration. اوكي؟ plasma creatinine concentration depends on muscle mass. The rate of creatinine turnover and renal function. So plasma creatinine is dependent on muscle mass. That's why it's higher in male than female. Ala the rate of creatinine turnover and renal function. Diet rich in protein can also influence the plasma creatinine, but not in normal individuals like I told you before. Creatine and creatinine uh, metabolism. Creatine is synthesized in the liver from arginine, glycine, and methionine transported to other tissues such as the muscle where it's converted to creatine phosphate, a high energy source by creatine kinase. So it's the energy store of the muscle. Creatine phosphate loses phosphoric acid and creatine loses water to form creatinine, which diffuses to the plasma and is, is excreted in urine. It's removed by the, from the circulation by the glomerular filtration and excreted in urine. So any glomerular phritis, can elevate the creatinine in plasma. So we measure creatinine in order because it's the most sensitive uh, for checking kidney function to determine the sufficiency of the kidney function, the severity of the kidney damage, okay? The normal uh, range of the glomerular filtration rate is from, is from 70 to 135 milli per minute per body surface area. Uric acid. Uric acid is uh, the end product of purine catabolism. If you remember purines, adenosine and guanine, they break down and they are uh, from uh, the ingested uh, nucleic acid, ing nucleic acid of diet or from tissue destruction. These purines will be degraded into uric acid, converted to uric acid in the liver. Okay. Small amounts of uric acid are secreted by the distal tubules into the urine so that the adult female has 2.6 to 6 milligram per deciliter serum uric acid. In the male, it's from 3.5 to 6.5 milligram per deciliter. Any elevation above the 6.5 will lead to a disease cause, uh, called gout. Yani uric acid is from the breakdown of adenine and guanine. اللي هم البيورين بيزز بتاعت ال DNA وال RNA، طب واحنا بنكسر ال DNA وال RNA؟ اه بنكسر النيوكليك اسيد اللي في الاكل. التيشو اللي ما بتاكل انيمال تيشو ده فيه نيوكليك اسيد. 
طيب مش انت عندك تيرن اوفر للبروتينز بتاعت جسمك كل يوم في بروتينز بتتكسر وبروتينز بتت بتتجدد طب الخلايا دي فيها نيوكليك اسيد فيبقى نورمالي في ديجراديشن للبيورين والبيرميدين والبيورين بيزز انها تتحول لايه ليوريك اسيد في الليفر نورمالي ده الليفلز بتاعت اليوريك اسيد اي اليفيشن اباف الليفل ده بيعمل مرض اسمه جاوت او النقرس مرض النقرس ديزيز كولد جاوت patients on chemotherapy for proliferative disease like leukemia and lymphomas they have elevated uric acid and gout patients with chronic renal failure because there will be no filtration of the uric acid so its level will increase in the blood uh, this is uh, enough yani, enough for now to know because you're you're going to take gout uh, after this in details so what is gout it's uh, an inflammatory disease affecting the joints Uh, small joints of the of the of the hands and the feet, particularly the big toe. The patient firstly uh, 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 suffers from pain of the in the big toe uh, due to accumulation of uric acid in the small joints, causing inflammation and arthritis. يعني yani, uric acid دلما بيعلى على 6.5 بيبقى insoluble وبيعمل crystals والcrystals بتترسب على المفاصل الصغيرة بتاعة الإيد والرجل بالذات الرجل بالذات البيك تو. تلاقي المريض بيشتكي من صباع رجله الكبير ليه؟ لانه اليوريك اسيد بيعمل بريسيبيتيت بتعمل تارجتنج للجوينتس للسمول جوينتس تعمل فيها التهاب شديد بنسميه مرض النقرس او الجاوت. اليوريك اسيد كمان بيبريسيبيتيت في الكدني ويعمل رينال ستونز. سو جاوت مينز ذات ذا بيشنت از سسبتبل تو ارثرايتس اوف ذا سمول جوينتس اند يوريك اسيد ستونز ان ذا يورينري تراكت. اوكي؟ This happens with patients with chronic renal disease. So if a patient has a high uric acid, you have to exclude renal disease because the renal disease can be a cause of this condition and you have to treat the renal disorder. Okay? But the patients are like chemotherapy. And that's what they take chemotherapy for leukemia and lymphomas and multiple myeloma. And the lack of chemotherapy that be cancer in the cells and be cancer in the cells normal. فنتيجه كده ان في بريك داون كتير لليوريك اسيد للبيورين والبيورين والبيريميديز في انتاج كبير لليوريك اسيد فالناس دي عرضه للجوت مع الكيموثيرابي. طبعا this is an illustration of the arthritis caused by precipitation of uric acid gout of the small joints of the hands and the feet. Okay, this is the, an example of this condition. Ammonia. is another uh, NPN of blood. Uh, what's the source of ammonia? The amination of amino acid. Amino acid catabolism during protein metabolism. It's removed from the circulation and converted to urea in the liver, like we said. Free ammonia is toxic and can cause hepatic encephalopathy or can cause uh, a coma because it's very toxic to the CNS, ammonia. That's why ammonia has to be detoxified in the liver and converted to urea. Normally, the, the plasma contains very low concentration of ammonia, okay? Hyperammonemia takes place with uh, uh, severe uh, uh, GIT hemorrhage, starvation, uh, liver and kidney failure. All these can lead to uh, this disorder. Another NPN of blood you're going to find in the book is uh, the amino acids, amino acid pool, resulting from breakdown of proteins and digestion of proteins. Uh, normally, we have an amino acid pool. We have amino acids circulating in the plasma, and we call them NPN as well. You are going to find all this part. You are going to study it from the table in the book. Table, a table entitled NPN of blood. You are, blood. You are going to study this table. NPN of blood, okay? Just study this table and it will be uh, just fine. It will be enough.